Yo, what's good? This is your boy Lawrence, and I'm here with Chris and Luke, co host of SUP FM. Yeah, buddy. Every week we talk about streetwear, different things that are driving the culture, different things that are driving the hype. We're going to go over all the new sneaker releases, what's behind the design. Yep. We unpack stories from those sneakers. We'll talk to some of the best designers, and you'll probably get a rant from me about the old days of the sneaker culture. <laughs> yep. Listen, if there's stuff to talk about, we're going to talk about it. We are SUP FM. <laughs> That is right. Here we are. Sub FM. You know the deal. This is Chris, one of your co-hosts. Across from me, virtually, we have my guy, Luke Trovisi. What's up, buddy? Hey, hey, hey. What's up, everybody? He's got that red mic. And on the other side of him, we have my other main man, my other partner in crime. We have LZD325, Lawrence DeLoach. What is up, sir? Not much, man. Just happy to be here. That is that is great to hear. And like I just said, LZD325, that's where you can follow him on all social media. What about you, Luke? Where can they you find you? Can find me at Trevisus. But what about you, Chris? Not that Cheney, C H E N E Y across all platforms, not that Cheney.com. You already know what it is. Um, guys, what is going on? Tell me. How are you? Good, man. It's a it's a, a beautiful but you know, sad day. Mm. Um mm-hmm. we're gonna Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bean Bryant, you know. One of the the top 10 greatest NBA players of all time, in my eyes, is going to be inducted to the NBA Hall of Fame. Well deserved, of course. There's no question about that. You know, it's it's uh, it's wonderful. And I I think we're you know, obviously you want to see the man give his own speech. But I think, you know, he will be celebrated. And and the class that he's going in with is his peers and guys that he's battled with. And, and defeated and lost to, you know, and, and Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett. So it's just a, it's a wonderful day for basketball. Mm-hmm. These guys are supposed to be inducted, obviously, in, uh, in 2020. Uh, but with COVID, pushed it out a little bit. But I'm just, I'm fucking, I'm excited, man. Those three guys are amazing. And, and, and Kobe, man, Jesus, jeez, man. Mm-hmm. I, I, get so, I get so emotional when I think about Kobe. And I, I know if I watch it, I'll, I'll fucking cry. Um, and I and I will shed a tear, but you know this is a sneaker podcast, and and they've had wonderful memories and and some of the greatest sneakers that we that we go crazy over, man. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Luke, how do you feel about the whole situation? I mean, you know, I'm I'm happy to see Kobe finally get uh, the recognition and get. I mean, like you know, he's always had his recognition, but like uh, just getting the Hall of Fame stamp, we mm-hmm. knew it was coming. It was just like. It's just finally ha- happy to see it happen. It's it it is very bittersweet because yeah, like Lawrence said, I, I would have loved to hear Kobe fucking roast everybody. Uh <laughs> yes. while he was receiving his his trophy. I'm the best. Michael couldn't beat me. <laughs> like, I don't know. Wild well, shit. Yeah. They they actually when you say, you know, Michael, and we always look at the Michael Jordan Hall of Fame speech, and it's one of the funniest yeah. because it was like, <laughs> dude, you are the greatest basketball player to ever play the game. Yes. Yet his Hall of Fame speech still showed that he is it, it can be a dick. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. And and I think to see Michael uh, you know, uh induct Kobe today and the relationship and the bond that those two guys have had over, you know, 20 plus years. You know, when we watch when, you know, we, we saw as in the last dance, we watch, you know, Michael talk about Kobe. And then we saw as Michael retired, you know, how Kobe was the the best shooting guard in the league. And and I think they have a little big brother, little brother. And we, we saw Michael talk, you know, talk about Kobe being a little annoying little brother, you know, at the uh, the memorial that Kobe mm-hmm. had. So mm-hmm. to to watch the two undisputed uh, greatest shooting guards to ever play in the NBA and the bond that they had and the way their careers kind of, you know, overlap, but um, you know, they, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be, like I said, it's going to be bring your, your tissues. Um, Those and, last text messages got leaked out too, of like the interaction they had about like coaching Gigi, I guess. Right. Well, Michael talked about it. He, yeah, he yeah, kind yeah. of, you know, he kind of leaked it out, but um, you know, it's, it's kind of like uh, what they say is when, when someone passes away, you know, the, you know, you guys are close. You, you tend to hold on to those those text messages, those voicemails. Absolutely. Because you don't want it to be, you know, you delete stuff like that. It, it becomes final mm-hmm. in, in a sense. It, it is final. But, you know, it's like, oh, man, now, you know, I can look back and laugh at those those text messages. You know, I do it. all. I do it when I, you know, people I know that have passed away. Sometimes I look at a message that, you know, we've sent 
years of ago. Course. And, and it's, yeah. you know, so I, I think we're just, like I said, today's going to be a wonderful day. And we're recording this on a Saturday. We're co- recording this on the day of the Hall of Fame. May 15th. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also have, uh, you know, we're going to talk a little bit more about Kobe and 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 the sneakers uh, in, in a second. But we also have Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett, and I kind of want to talk a little bit about their uh, their sneakers because once again, I mean, we've learned and you know that big men have a tough time selling sneakers. It's true. Mm-hmm. You know, we've learned, we've seen Kobe, we've seen you know Michael, you know LeBron, KD. We've seen the guards, the wingmen they've been able to sell, but we have a history of bigs like Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, Patrick Ewan, you know, having, you talked about earlier, Chris, Kevin Garnett's been through many sneaker contracts. Nike. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah off yeah. mic, off mic. We did have a quick conversation about uh, Kevin Garnett specifically, man. He really just hopped around, bro. Like he was not satisfied anywhere he went. And um, I don't know if, if it's something to speak to, like it's like designing for a bigger guy. Cause then when you take it, off his foot and try to put it on a smaller foot. I don't know if it looks weird. I have no experience in that sort of design process, but man, he went from <laughs> Nike to a lifetime contract with Adidas, if I remember correctly. And then uh, he said, yo, I'm Kevin Garnett. I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> and then he left a lifetime contract and went to uh, China. He went to Anta. So yeah, he's had a lot of experiences. I mean, um, do you, is it, what, what do you got? Do you, do you think that the whole argument he had with Adidas was like when they were doing the lifetime contract? He's like, you can't get out of this. It's a lifetime contract. And he just says, anything is possible. You know? <laughs> anything is possible. Anything is possible. <laughs> you, know what's, you know what's funny about that? Because I was in the building, um, not t- uh, uh, technically the Adidas building. It was Reebok headquarters, but, you know, owned by Adidas. So there was Adidas employees there. I was working there. And man, they threw that shit out everywhere. I remember this one dude, he came through and he was like, hey, can you write anything as possible down? And they were using employees uh, handwriting. And mm-hmm. then they picked like the best one. They used it in ads and shit. That shit was they ran with that crazy. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, I, yeah, no, I, he I, said anything is uh, negotiable, which is me leaving. I think that's what he said. <laughs> I, I think uh, I think guys like uh, Tim Duncan's has some wonderful sneakers as well. You know, yeah, it's true. Uh, phone mm-hmm. posits. But I, I think what you said, Chris, is very true. It's um, uh, not everyone is going to be, you know, seven feet, 250, you know, 6'10", 230, like Kevin Garnett and, and Tim Duncan. Or so when when these sneakers are being designed, you know, they they're a lot heavier for for big guys. And as mm-hmm. a guy who who's played basketball, I mean, I like the lighter sneakers. I've I've always been a fan of playing basketball and Kobe fives, Kobe eights, because the low tops, they're they're lightweight. Um, I, you know, I've, I found myself hating, uh, LeBron sneakers because yes, they, they're too heavy. They're engineered for a guy who is a freight train. And when you take that off of a freight train and you put it on a guy who is six, one, two twenty five, you know, it's like, uh, this doesn't feel good. Right. Yeah. Like arguably you put the freight train load on the caboose and it ain't, <laughs> ain't going to no, run it properly. It doesn't it doesn't run properly. So I think that's where a lot of times we would see that, you know, we these big men would have a tough time. It's like, you know, there's not many. Shaq sneakers, um, I think that's a little different because it was Reebok and, you know, I think that's a little different. Um, but when you look at Nike's. Oh, yeah. And then the mm-hmm. Payless. Let's not forget the Payless Shaqs. The, the <laughs> data joints. The no, we're the, trying you know. to forget still. <laughs> but I think, yeah, I think that's what would what, what happen. So I think when you see guys like Kobe, and and we look at the the low mo, uh, the low models that he had, mm-hmm. bro, five through eight. Oh my God, we're looking at some Shaq Jordan threes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Clear, those clearly. are built like cement threes. Yeah. So I think, yeah. I, um, we do have uh, we do have some other stuff we kind of want to talk about, especially in regards to Kobe. We had a release today, the uh, undefeated uh, Hall of Fame Kobe fives mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and sneakers has been going with the draw. Yeah. For, oh, is well, it- no, no. Say, yeah, they've been going with the draw. Yeah. And they, you know, advertise draw. Everything's a draw. And then today we had releases that turn into a, a Leo. A let everyone order. And it was a three minute raffle. And there were problems as usual. And I wanted to know, did you guys attempt to purchase the Kobe's? I've, hold, I've held strong. I have not redownloaded. My life honestly has improved vastly. Mm-hmm. By not re-downloading, not having that red icon on my phone, not having to be curious, not having to check, I'm I'm good, man. I'm chilling. 
Are we are we doing it? Are we doing a sneakers wellness check? <laughs> <laughs> yes, are we? we are. You okay? No, man. I'm pretty fucking far from okay. <laughs> You're gonna be okay. You're gonna be, right. You're gonna be okay. You sure you're okay? <laughs> okay. Yo, check on your friends that have the sneakers at. Uh, like our new show, new drop suggests, I will check on you guys because I'm doing great. But how are you? I mean, I'm I'm doing uh. I'm not doing great today. All right. Let's just say I'm not doing great. I went for the Kobe's as uh, as one would. I went for the Kobe's bunch of errors, just bunch of errors came up, went to the, I was like, all right, I got time. I'll go. I'll go like, you know, take my time. Then I'll go to the, the shadows next. Then I get to the shadows and it's already, you know, it's already no, no good. They don't want me having them. And, uh, yeah, they switched us up. They switched up on us and I'm not happy about it. What about you, Lawrence? You know, I say I used to be upset, but now I go into it like, you know, if you depended on sneakers for a win, you're you're pretty fucked, you know, and then I, and it didn't phase me. I mean, I did. I want the the Kobe undefeated. Yes, I did. But at the same time, I know you had a better shot winning through the undefeated raffle itself as opposed to this bullshit sneakers app. Yeah, I know Meanie, our producer, got a pair today, which is pretty crazy. You got a pair of uh, shadow shadow ones, shadow right. ones. shadow ones. Yes, correct, correct. And yes. uh, it seems like, you know, by his suggestion, there might be a conspiracy involved in why he won because, as we know, mm-hmm. Meanie's no wasn't necessarily a ten o'clock hitting the buy button kind of guy. No, not at all. He wasn't chasing sneakers like we were constantly doing, but he got a W. Now, why would that be? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He told us that uh, he at 10 o'clock, he went on sneakers, entered the raffle before he went on a run, which he uses the Nike Plus app. Is that what it's called? Yeah, like the Nike free run app. Nike free run, right? To track. So he hits he hits by, doesn't even think nothing of it, according to him. Uh, Run club, I guess, whatever. Nothing core to him. He just runs his whatever couple miles. Then he looks back on his phone to check his stats. And all of a sudden he goes, "Uh, yeah, whatever. This is your amount of time. Also, you have some shadows. I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, I can see. I mean, I've seen, you know, they always say the more you interact with the Nike apps, the better chances you have of winning, quote unquote, sometimes. Yeah. So. I mean, we have evidence of Nike admitting that, like, for the fly ease, uh, mm-hmm. if you paid more interest to the fly ease on the sneakers app, they gave you a better chance or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, how valid do we think that this uh, run club association is? Uh, is to winning on sneakers i think i think what we really got to do is we have to run a sample test right we have to run an experiment and the only way to do that is to get our listeners who are in the discord to run on a day of a big release so that we have a big enough sample size Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's true i mean i think we might also need to participate in some capacity Okay. Okay. But as a, as a stoner, uh, I don't really want to run, so, uh, I'll get somebody in my place. Uh, everybody should, uh, I think if you want to participate in our next experiment, which is, you know, the, I think Meanie said he ran for three miles. All right, we don't we, we yo we, hold on a, no okay okay yeah it's the three mile the meanie run <laughs> it's the meanie run well, on the mm-hmm. next next release of a Jordan one we all do the meanie run it's a three mile run you get the the Nike Run Club app and you see if we can fucking win again I mean meanie meanie told us that he's gonna try this on the next uh whatever release he wants I, I don't necessarily know okay so representing the SUP FM club is going to be Matt Meanie our producer. Yes, on the mini run. On, on the, the mini run. Mini run. <laughs> the mini run. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Congratulations, Matt. You are now running for Sup FM. <laughs> <laughs> You're a sponsored runner. <laughs> uh, if you should join the Discord, uh, link will be in the in the description of this yep. uh, podcast wherever you find it. Um, we, yeah, join us on our little adventure uh, with this fun little conspiracy. No, but seriously, before we like, you know, uh, move on, though, like how how real do we think this is like? Because well, I'm yeah. I'm down with like the idea of Nike's uh, 
giving favor with inside the sneakers app to a certain mm. shoe. Right. Mm-hmm. It, you know, if you're interacting with it. Um, I don't know if it, it goes across all Nike apps, though. I don't know if I'm buying that. No, it, it definitely doesn't. There's uh-huh. no way. I think it's a very loose association. Um, but our Discord listeners should try it anyway. Yes. Um, I do. I do do this thing where I, I'll like, I, you know, the, the tap the like button repeatedly. And then you click the notify me button a couple times, too. Just to like get the app going a little bit, like desperate, bro. Interaction, desperate. <laughs> I don't know. My look at my record. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I mean, like, I'm just equating that to like a girl on Instagram. I'm. I, listen, I'm 33 percent from the three point line, buddy. <laughs> that's a, that's a 33, good number. 33 percent is not bad at all, my guy. Well, that's a good stat, bro. That's I know it sounds stat. low, but it's actually high. That's pretty high. 33%. You wish you could shoot from, from three like that. <laughs> I mean, that's facts. What else we got going on, guys? We got it. We got a leak. A Travis Scott one leak by future Hendrix. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> uh, Air Max, new model, still reverse swoosh on brand. How it's do we Air feel? Max, it's Air Max one. It's not a new model. I meant new model for Travis. Oh, tra- yeah. okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, Air Max One, Trav, uh, it's not bad. You know, I mean, we got to see better shots, but it was there was a good, clear shot of it. I don't, I don't mind. It's still going to be hard. It's going to be, it's better than 270s. So let's just put it that way. Absolutely. fucking Okay, hot take, hot take, everybody. Hot take, no, that is a regular, normal take. <laughs> it's a regular take. They are better than 270s. Um, so looking at it, I mean, to me, I can see some interesting new construction. Mm-hmm. Um, that is not the normal, uh, at least the heel tab of uh an air max um i don't know what like they got this like uh jacquard like webbing i don't know what you want to call it we'll just call it like a wristband looking thing Mm -hmm. going on through the whole thing um Mm -hmm. that's interesting i can't really tell what's happening on the tongue logo label and what's up with the laces it's hard to kind of see based off this one photo but i mean i'm into it as far as like you know an execution on a new trav model yeah, I am too. And I think, you know, I think what, what Future said was next year. So I'm expecting these to fully be the uh, the Air Max Day uh, special uh, for next year. Oh, Meanie's uh, pointing yeah. out that it's an Air Max 95 tongue. That's interesting. I wouldn't have picked that up. Okay, cool. I mean, so I guess it's some kind of hybrid or he's saying 97. I'm also not uh, off rip freestyling here. Not yeah, sure. Well- we need to bring in an Air Max specialist for this. <laughs> um, yeah, man. I, I don't know. What is that like kind of uh, that toe box material? Because it kind of looks like canvas. Uh, it could be a number of things, man. It's hard to say off a photo like that, but it mm-hmm. could be like a nylon ripstop. Or like uh, a hemp. Yeah, I mean, it if you look hemp, like yeah. usually that like square ish looking pattern lends itself to nylon. Mm-hmm. Um, but then again, like you might be right. It might be canvas. It might mm-hmm. be uh it's also hard. I wish there was like a scuff on it because usually you could tell what it is based off a of scuff. Mm-hmm. But, you know, my man's just too fresh. So it's like, yeah, it's supposed to be like a like a hiking shoe. Right. Kind of similar theme to those 270s. I guess. I don't know. I mean, we'll just have to, like, you know, speculate until we see more. But like it could it really could be anything based off this photo. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know, I see. But yeah, I mean, cool. I mean, this will fly. Uh, we all know that. Yep. I don't think I think this will probably be one of the more I mean, the one of the least successful of his run, I think. No, this is. Gonna yeah, be, you think I'm with, that, I'm with Al. No, you think. that? Yeah, you think this is going to be. It's it's not a right. Jordan one or a Jordan four, but in terms of people love Air Max ones. OK, and, that's true. And their Air Max ones uh, if you are greater than Air Max 270s. And I think that's what true. we will see. So, OK, that's fair. That's fair. I see it. I yeah, don't forget classic model of, among the Nike silhouettes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, there's there's Air Max heads in the same way. There's one heads in the yeah. same way that there's dunk heads. There's Air Max mm-hmm. heads mm-hmm. and specifically for that model. So this. Yeah, this would definitely mm-hmm. go. But I understand where your uh you know, your doubt is coming from. Because again, I mean, this is what the 15th fucking shoe this kid has gotten. Yeah, this has been like the, this, the we've seen kind of a trend with Air Maxes too lately where they've been like, they haven't really been doing anything, you know, uh, the the Bacons were like, you know, uh, they, they they stocked a lot of them. So 
I don't know if like what the stock numbers are going to be on this. We'll see. It is Air Max, you know. It's a Travis Scott. It's it's going to be limited. We all know. You're right. We know. <laughs> Looks like yeah. Well, let's get let's get a hundred thousand pairs of the Travis let's Scott Air Max 000. ones. Yeah, Vice President. <laughs> let's fucking flood the streets, and you know it could be a hundred thousand fucking pairs, and it'll still be a hundred and one thousand people that want the fucking shoe. So, sure. you know, it, it just doesn't. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah. It, nothing with that kid's name on it is selling less for 500 generally I know. speaking it's i keep looking at those 33s that, that he did as mm-hmm. like the benchmark as like the lowest you know cuz it was like if 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 he can make a air max 33 or uh, air jordan 33 like $500 i guess they're they're really I, on stock you were looking yeah i think so why yeah. where are they at now oh i have no idea oh, okay oh maybe i should talk about my little thing i had on stock Oh, yeah, that's right. If you want to. can you? Yeah, no, I, I'll talk about it. Um, I mean, I won't give any information that I don't think I should. So basically, um, I mean, this is just a kind of a quick story, but I got a I got a Yeezy early um, blessed, if yes. you will. And it wasn't a fire model. It was the uh, Sumac or whatever this. I don't know what the fuck this one was. Uh, but regardless of where I got it from, I got it early um, and I was like, oh, let me see what I could do with this on stock. <laughs> so it comes out with the 17 so it comes out monday right so I, I got this like last last like in the middle of the week or whatever so i'm like let's just see let's just have some fun let's see what i could do with a with an unreleased yeezy right so i list it for like i see i see it's listed for 800 and that sold one which you know those numbers are never real right you can't right. go off that number but you can base off your listing based off that one number because it is still unreleased so i'm like let me do like 650 let me see what's good Someone else got a pair somehow, a run, it seems like, a reseller, a back, someone got backdoored because then that person started listing all their shit and they based their listing off my 650 mm-hmm. and they put theirs for 500. Okay. But they did that across the board, which is interesting to think about because I helped set the standard for what this guy was reselling for. Yes, you, you're, you, they put you in charge of the resale price. No, which is crazy though, because I'm just doing it based on that one that 800 sale. So this one 800 sale is setting the whole resale market for this one shoe. Granted, right. it's not a hype shoe. It's not the best easy colorway. Uh, it's it's a whatever fucking thing. But whatever, like this whole chain of events is affecting how people are gonna buy, which is just wild to me. I didn't, I mean, you know, it's it's not that crazy to think about generally, but when you think about it actually happening, you're like, damn, that's crazy. So. He sold, he managed to sell one nine. I listed my nine, like I told you, at 650. And then he put his for 500. So I'm like, oh, let me match his ask. Then he put his listing to 499. He managed to sell that nine at 499. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in my head, I'm like, oh, we're playing prices right now. I got to go to 498. I'm not joking for an hour and a half, bro. We traded lowest asks and we got down to like 350. Who won? I took my shit off. I was like, fuck it. I'm not doing this. I'd rather just have it. Yeah, I lost. lost. Well, actually, no, no. I did lose. Ultimately, he won the war, but I won the battle of Lois ass because he stopped. Okay. He stopped bringing it down. We got to like 350, that area. Maybe it was like 363 or something something weird like that. I wonder Mm -hmm. if you could actually check on stock to see if like there was like a chart of Lois ass. I never really looked at it. No, but they have to be purchased. Yeah. So he won the war in the sense I was like, I'm not selling this for three, whatever. Mm-hmm. What are you, like you what are you have. talking about? No, I'm not. You should no. have on principle at that point. No, I, w- I was like, fuck it, whatever. I'll just fucking keep these. I'll keep them in the back, and this will be some shit I break out like ten years later on some like, who? What the fuck is that shit? All right. So- well, you don't don't break them out ten years later because there'll be four retros. Uh, the way, <laughs> that's true. The that's way true. Adidas moves. So, you well, f- figure it out. You know, we had this age conversation, um, not age year conversation, uh, about Jordans. Uh huh. You know, now I'm just in the moment realizing that Yeezy's kind of setting himself up to do that, too, because now you have like what like L. if I'm asking you about your turtle doves, right? What year did those come out? Uh, turtle doves were 2015. So, so if they were, which wait, wait, what are you talking? not turtle doves? You're talking about the uh, zebras. You're talking about the the one. Which one are you talking about? Because there's only so one. I guess, turtle, it, I guess there's it's only one. Zebras, turtle, right. Yeah, there's only one turtle dove. So excuse me. My fault. There, there's, um, a ze- there's a zebra. a 2017 zebra. Uh, there's two 2017 zebras, I believe. Mm-hmm. Then there's a uh, a 20. I don't know if it's 2018 or 2019. 
zebra, but there's multiple zebras out there. Yeah. So the years are much tighter, obviously, but there could be a conversation later. If he's retro on him four times, you might get respect for that initial drop one, you know? Uh, not. It's so weird because they're all pretty much the same. It seems like Adidas gets better as the retro. Like the retro seems better than the yeah. than the original. Like the the pirate black, um, the first uh, Yeezy, the pirate black one. They retro. Remember they came out in 2015 in the summer, and then mm -hmm. they uh, re-released them in the winter of 2016. And some people like the better, the newer model because it was more uh, it was more cushion. There was more comfort. So I think with Jordans is a little, you know, a little different because some people are like, I like the OG ones. I like the higher cut. I like this version of the level. Yep. But with, with Kanye shit, it's like like Adidas, like we could throw this tech in there now. We can throw this comfort padding in there. So I don't know if you, the OGs, I mean, they all so fucking similar anyway. I don't know what you don't get respect for with Yeezys anymore. I remember we had this conversation when um I think I was a guest, actually. We had this conversation when they first re-released the Zebras. And I was, like, saying, like, oh, yeah, it's great. And, like, uh, I think the, the orig original ones are going to be more valued because I was basing it off of Jordan brand. And then as we kind of, you know, like, as you said, as we've kind of seen the retroing going with Adidas, uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I really don't think it matters anymore. Mm -mm. No, Might be right. I mean, we'll have to see how this kind of, plays out because like the easy story is actually unfolding as it's happening i know like you know jordan's been around for so long you know we, we have a right. strong history there's a strong canon here but with easy it's literally like we're watching it unfold so it's just something to note and pay attention to absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. there might be a point where someone will be like the 2021 zebras are the most comfortable of all of them so mm -hmm. those will be like the most sought after for some reason he also already has a difference in drops where like some come with 3m and some don't in some of those right colorways too so like you obviously are going to get more respect if you have the reflective one you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah I but guess, those are yeah. those are different like i mean we're talking we're talking zebra to zebra yeah like right. pretty much everything's the same like i know what you're saying so there was like sometimes he'll do a drop and it'll be one to be reflective it'll be the same color one will be reflective mm -hmm. one won't but like we're not even talking about the retro of it. We're talking like when when I say when we say retro, we mean 2017. Then there's a 2019 one. And like Luke said, like I could see people clamoring for the newer model more than the the original model. Fair, just, fair. I mean, it's interesting nonetheless. You yeah. know, just something to point out. I mean, if the way that all these brands drop new shit i mean like even like oh we kind of skipped over the reverse grinches like that's another thing too is when you reverse the colorway that it's like a new branch on the tree of that shoe you know what i mean yeah um so i mean there's plenty of these different ways to go about it also uh you know i'm you know i'm kind of surprised we got the hall of fames when we did it kind of made sense because you know it's undefeated and uh and nike but i'm still surprised that we're getting more kobe models right now like i thought the contract was up right Yep. Well, you know, sort of to what uh, Lauren said in another episode uh, titled Milking Mamba. I mean, I mean, here we are. Yeah. That's what makes that's what makes the whole end of the partnership so interesting and weird to me, because I think both parties need each other and to, to a certain extent. Um, and and I know that the, the players love the Kobe fives. They love the to play the play in these models. You see guys like Anthony Davis and John Morant would talk about like how, you know, I love the pro shows. I need like more. Like I just have people buy up what I can because I that's how I play in. And I think if you have enough of these players, high value players complain about what's going on, I think there will need to be some type of compromise. But like Chris and like you were saying, Luke, I mean, we're just seeing more and more pictures. We saw the black and white uh, Kobe sixes, I believe. It's the Mamba and Mamba Sita uh, ones, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. those are beautiful, man. Like they, those are amazing. And it's sad that so many people will not get their hands on on that model or that sneaker. But, it, you know, once again, I mean, how much more is Nike going to milk this shit? Because they're doing a great job at it right now. Um, so not to play devil's advocate for Nike, but, uh, a lot of times when we have these discussions as consumers, we don't think about like lead time and production. Mm -hmm. So oh, generally speaking, you don't get a shoe really until a year and a half after you place a purchase order. Right. I'm mm -hmm. saying this very loosely for any 
uh, any other designers listening, but like, right. So you, so they probably had this done um, fairly recently with a push order through, but uh, I mean, it takes a long time to make a sneaker. You know what I mean? This isn't something that you can like order and have in a week. We're talking like massive amounts of quantities, mass, like there's lead times for this kind of shit. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if they sort of had these underway uh, within three months of his passing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's just one of those things like, are they milking it? Like, I mean, yes, kind of. But also like there was probably some good intent planned shit happening before this whole, you know, disassociation from Nike. Well, you have to look and just say, um, like you said, yeah, I, I can see that because when you look at the you look at a pair of sneakers and say, like you said, Chris, they they release in May of 2021. Mm -hmm. You look in the inside and the production dates are maybe seven months before that. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. you got it. So then it then also, like you said, now, if the production months are seven, eight months before the actual release date, how long was it in the pipeline for these, you know, for these shoes to come out? Yeah. So it definitely it is a valid point, bro. It, but it just feels like there needs to be some type of agreement because I think we have too many people that play ball and, and enjoy these Kobe sneakers. I mean, I uh, it's going to be interesting to see, man. I mean, because like, you know, as we've been saying, this is all kind of unfolding. Like, are they going to take the logos off? Are they going to, you know, what are they going to like, you know, what kind of treatment? Because that is their silhouette. You know what I mean? I right. Who really knows what the contract says as far as like who owns what? Um, I mean, you know, we've seen in the past where like uh, I'm blanking on his name, uh, won the championship with the Raptors. Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi, Leonard. Kawhi Leonard. had that logo distrib like that issue where it's like, you know, Nike said they owned it and then he had to go do a new one with New Balance or whatever. So it's like who really owns that Kobe logo because it's tied to a lot. I don't know. But so what are you going to do? You're going to drop the Kobe retro uh, the Pro Tro fives, you gonna call it Nike Air shooting guard Los Angeles <laughs> model. Like, I mean, what the fuck? Like, people, uh, you know, like it, uh, it just, you know, what are you gonna like it? That's that's what I'm saying. Like, like the 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 sneakers, a yes, they will sell themselves. People, you know, basketball players love the sneakers, but also Kobe's name being attached to the sneakers are what pushes the fucking model yeah you're not <laughs> yeah, wrong you're right. bro and the streets will always know we'll always have them as the kobe's but formally nike at the title of the fucking page or whatever they can change it to whatever they want maybe who knows you know we're yeah. speculating but yeah they you know, might just I, call them pro tros that's it no kobe pro tros listen when i was a kid i used to play nba live basketball on super nintendo oh yeah, michael baby. jordan michael jordan was not uh, he did not sign the con the NBA Players Association contract so his likenesses could be in in certain video games. It took a, a long time. So for the longest, we would play video games with uh, Michael Jordan being roster player 99. And we <laughs> yep. knew he was ball headed. He fucking was doing every move that Michael Jordan was possible. But you just felt like, damn, this motherfucker is not Michael Jordan. Like it's roster <laughs> player 99. And I feel like that's what the the if. Nike pull some stupid shit like this. We're going to be like, really, bro? Like, you're going to drop the Kobe Pro Trolls but not use Kobe's name? It just feels it's whack. And here we have it, folks. As our intro says, we get an old head rant from Lawrence. Fucking old head rant, y'all. For real, for real, man. This has been an old head rant. My back hurts. <laughs> My knee hurts. My head hurts. Everything hurts. What? I, what did he I, say? What those young kids say? Get off my lawn, you young stupid kids. Hey. Kobe's Kobe Protros without the logo. That's a dotro. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Oh man. Oh, man. Oh. I mean, all right. So that aside, the reverse Grinches. Luke, I have to ask you, as the uh, Grinch no. aficionado. No. No. Basura. I don't know what that means. That means Trash. garbage in Spanish, man. Oh, I'm English. Oh, we oh, know. God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but why? Can you expound? It's just the. It's just not right. I don't mm -hmm. know, man. It just looks wrong. Like the, the red is just. It just doesn't fit at all. You should have just mm -hmm. done a Santa Claus shoe at this point. Yeah. Like it. It doesn't have like. Because it, it was nice about the Grinch was that it had the kind of it tied to the story. Right. So you had this green, loud, angry colorway. And then when mm -hmm. you reverse it, it just doesn't it just make this. I don't know. Just it. 
No. <laughs> just All right. No. Now, okay. I'll just keep playing devil's advocate. Um, I'm having a hard time not seeing this go because of the love for an all red sneaker. Okay, it'll go, but I'm not gonna get it. Like it's not gonna be me. You're you know? not. Yeah. I'm not okay. Going for these, no. I'll go for the other ones, the Mamba and Mamba Cedars. Those are beautiful. That's a beautiful, well executed sneaker. Yeah. I agree. Um, this is lazy. Mm. Lazy. You call this lazy? That's I interesting. Call this- I call this I call this lazy. That's what I do. Okay. Well, our, our producer Matt brought up a very good point. He said the original Grinches were loud, uh, but this feels like a different type of loud. This is a, yeah, different loud. A this red is, loud is much different than a green loud. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Because I think I think the see. I here's the thing. I think when you start, and maybe this is me another old head rant. But when I start thinking of red sneakers, red shorts, red pants, I start thinking of gangs. I start thinking of bloods and shit like that and maybe this is just me growing up in new york city but i don't fuck with red sneakers like that yeah because yeah, you, you are a crip we know i'm yeah i'm a straight up <laughs> crip oh my god <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna this is gonna cause me to lose any uh sponsorships, sponsorships. And, yeah exactly. and contracts that yeah no i'm not a gang member but no. no but all jokes aside yeah it just feels like when you start looking at red sneakers it just feels like yeah that's a gang member somewhere you that's know what I mean? that's that's also another thing that's another layer to it you know it is yeah, yeah. i was definitely thinking about that too but I, I you know i just don't i don't like the design none yeah. of the design the color just doesn't work Okay, I feel that. I mean, like, all right, so Luke, just as, because again, I, you've always talked about the Grinches being a grail. You've always wanted them. Mm-hmm. If if they were going to do another one, how, what, like, what would they do? If they were going to do another version, what would you okay. have? What would I wanted from a Grinch colorway? Yeah, just like in the lineage of that shoe, just another story being told, like not saying reversed, but like what else could they have done with it? Dude, they they really can't. They can't do it. That's why I think it's such a grailed shoe is mm-hmm. because there's not really much else you can do with it. Really, you know, what mm-hmm. are you gonna do? Like a Cindy Lou who? It just doesn't really work. It just, I mean, that's not a bad idea. It, no, but it's really like, how would you execute that? That's tough. Like what you do? Like a, yeah, it, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't really work. I don't think. You I know? feel you. It's just the. What part? What what made it is not like it's the culmination of all of the different aspects that made it such a grail chew. I think the the personality of Kobe. Yep. The Mm -hmm. character of the of the of the story, the the model of shoe. It just it was a perfect storm that cannot be recreated. Yep. It's just like he played in. He played. He actually played in the Grinches. Like on Christmas. That's what I'm saying. Like these, you're like ah, you know, there's no. There's no story behind it. It's like we start forcing these stories to sell more shoes. And I mm-hmm. think that is that is the problem right there. It's like, oh, we, you, we, the Grinches are doing numbers, so let's reverse them and fuck right. it. Right, it is to, cheap. Yeah. 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 I mean, we've, we've said it once before. We'll always say it. It's really the story, guys. You're right. It is. It's the fucking mm-hmm. story behind the sneaker. Jordan Jordan Brand does this. They do this well sometimes, and then they do it really shitty. If that makes sense, you know they do. They 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 have some great stories behind a sneaker to sell. Like I always go back to Shattered Backboards. We watched that video of Michael Jordan and that orange and black uniform shattering the backboard with like some lost footage, and we were able to then create. I think two Jordan ones that weren't that you know that weren't worn or ogs but we they had the story behind and it flowed well and we made a third one that nobody talks about yeah because it wasn't a fucking (laughs) shattered backboard don't forget about the satins too yeah that's true what wasn't a shattered backboard it was you know i think on the reverse end of that from jordan brand i think of the letterman's which is like the kind of the weird other end where they're just like now we're just kind of grasping at straws, you know, where he's yes. like first time on 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 David Letterman. We'll call these the Letterman. It's like uh, sometimes it's like, yeah, grasping at straws. I agree. We had like the rookie of the years, you know, like when you start looking, there's certain like sneakers. They always try to force a story behind certain things. And there's certain sneakers that have an amazing story. We look at. You know, a cement three. I mean, he wore it in the dunk contest. It's iconic. Mm-hmm. You know, the Jordan ones, they were banned from, you know, quote unquote banned 
you know, where, you know, they, they didn't match the uniform and they had this great marketing behind it. And that story will always stick. But like you said, Luke, sometimes it's just straw grasping and it's like, come on, y'all. Y'all don't have to have a fucking story behind every release. Mm-hmm. It's true. Sometimes you can just look cool. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, it, it, I mean, yeah, no, I'm with you guys. Um, you know, you, you guys just sort of reminded me to talk about the stories. Uh, we didn't really get to it last week, but I do kind of want to talk about the A-Life store for a second. Do it. Yeah, do it. You want to talk about stories, bro. Um, so I will just say I've had a very my my favorite surreal experience just to sort of speak on to the moments that have happened in the back of that store. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw Scarface, the rapper. Uh, playing a lefty guitar with the band Living Color. While Scarface was wearing a shirt I worked on. Oh, dope. Wow. Yeah. So there's there's no world um, where I think that you, you can recreate a moment like that. Mm-hmm. And there was tons of moments like that in that store. Um, I don't think a lot of people realize the significance that that place had. I mean, and it's 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 coming from a weird place because I I've always liked the brand and I did. I do work there. So it sounds like I'm meat riding because I kind of am. But I'm also like. It's it's hard to, yo. Within that, yeah, but you've post, been a day one meat rider. Uh, yes, I've been. <laughs> I was I was I was on a day one, baby. Um, have you guys been to the store before? I go too far because if if you guys have any words, that'd be great to hear from you guys first before I kind of like get too sentimental about it. Nah, get sentimental, dog. Yeah, go for it. Floor is yours. Mm-hmm. It's all right. So in 2010, when I interned. Uh, in Williamsburg at this place called the Keystone Design Union, KDU. There was this guy, David Gensler. I went there and we were trying to kick it at one weekend. And he was like, hey, is there something you want to do in the city? And mind you, so this is 2010, right? This is before like hype was really a thing. This is before any shit. I went like, I, I think I pretty much was like, hey, have you been to Rivington Club before? And he like laughed at me. He's like, yeah, of course I've been to A-Life. I'm like, can I go there? Is that, Am I like allowed? He was like, yeah, dog, it's a store. So he brought me. And that's when Chris Vidal was there. They had just done a New Balance collab or some shit. And, uh, you know, I'm looking around all like giddy. I'm like, this shit is crazy. You know what I mean? Just to be within the store that I kept reading about when I was like home in Boston. Mm-hmm. And then Chris Vidal gave me like some collaborative shirt. He's like, it's like, it was like a uniform shirt. He was like, yeah, just have this dog. When Trey posted. Um, yeah, boom. When Trey posted about how anyone of any influence had been through that store that's in streetwear today. That is a fact, bro. The, the, the shit we're all talking about right now is not existent without uh, this store happening. And for that to be gone is like, it's, you know, it's a, it's a truly an end of an era. If there is a mark on it. Mm-hmm. Damn, that shit was, I mean, yeah, the red fucking, yeah, I'm just going to like, but whatever. I mean, did this store have any impact on you guys? It doesn't necessarily need to have one. But like, did like, especially L. I mean, I mean, both of you actually. I mean, I, I kind of forget that you grew up in uh, New York, uh, <laughs> Luke, because you're so far away from the I'm city. Not in, I'm not in New York. <laughs> <laughs> no, I but like, New, does, I pay New York taxes. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but did like, did, what is like, did this store mean something to you guys growing up in New York? You could say no. It's not like a thing where like I'm trying to like. Nah, you know. I mean, I've purchased stuff from A-Life before. I mean, you know, I, I kind of I'm trying to think back to all the, you know, all the streetwear stores that, you know, in that era that I was going crazy for. Um, Supreme, obviously, of course. Um, you know, um, I was going to say there was like Transit. Uh, there, there was so many different stores. I'm, I'm trying to think because it's so far, you know, but. In that area, there was like Reed Space. That was a spot. Reed Space, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a couple spots that made you go east, right? But A Life was, to me, at least the one that was the reason why you would go over there. And all of the other ones were like just piggybacking off that vibe. Yeah, you hung out at you know Mercer, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. Twenty One Mercer, Bape Store. I mean, I'm just thinking, and you know, Soho was Lower East Side when I was younger. It was it was definitely a spot, and it wasn't as. Um, I bastardized i think maybe i'm using the work incorrectly but i feel like it's so different now it's but when completely it, different the vibe is completely different it doesn't feel like old new york anymore you know yeah yeah 
so I understand what you're saying, Chris, especially being from a design standpoint and a guy who, you know, you were you were immersed in that culture. You know what I'm saying? I think me, I was just kind of young and like, oh, this shit hot. I right, cool, man. I'm a fucks with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, I, and I think you, 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 you gave a lot of blood, sweat and tears into, you know, just seeing shit grow and, and being there and, and mm-hmm. building relationships. So may, my my experiences may not be it not may not be, but it's definitely not as deep as yours. But I can totally see where you're coming from, especially being a wide eyed kid and like, oh, shit, like I'm in the circle. I'm in the mix. Hey, man, you guys know me like when I like something, I'm in there going, I like this. So Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's it really is a testament to you that you somehow are able to work there to this day mm-hmm. after they've met you. That yeah. is that, After they got that to is, know you. Yeah, it's kind of yes. weird. It's like they didn't fire so you. Weird. Like, yeah, yeah, bro. Like they're like so weird. Chris is over here just trying to buy spin drift, and somebody walks in the office, like, yeah, that's Chris. He designs mm. stuff and he really likes seltzer. Like <laughs> it's, it's crazy to me that, that that is your life. You mm. know? I don't mm-hmm. I have it, no idea. It makes no sense. As far as like my history with A Life, I don't really have much there, but I do. You know, I used to hear like so I used to follow kind of all of those rappers that were coming through there. Right. Your mm-hmm. ASAP Rockies, your Drakes and whatnot. You used to hear legends of like these backyard parties. There was always like one kid in school who like was like, yeah, I, I went to this backyard party with with Drake. And it. like, you know, you knew these things were happening, you know, um, and that's like how that as, as most as I, I knew about a life until until I uh, started running, running around with you. You know, so footwear news did a great article. Um, apparently, I was in the office when this happened. I don't even fucking remember it. I wasn't paying attention. Like we have a small office and I kind of just like zone out when people are on phone calls because I'm not trying to hear anyone's business. But footwear news called Trey and he went through this whole rigmarole, uh, just like answering questions, whatever. And then like, you know, the next day they put out this article and it's like the headlines like uh, Nike and uh, the changing Lower East Side is the reason why a life had to close their store. Mm. Hmm. So Trey does reference like, oh, yeah, see, I mean, he pulls it up. Also, Nas in the back. I wasn't there for that one, but that shit. I mean, just look at that. That's a that's a party, bro. Um, Yeah. So I guess like uh, based off this one article, I'm not going to say too much, but someone from Nike reached out. And hopefully something comes from that. Um, But it does speak to about like how because Nike didn't give a life an account. Now, imagine having a sneaker store without having Nike as an account with yeah, no that, Nike sneakers. That's a testament yeah. to how, you know, the brand itself at this point. Yeah, Since 2012, dog, they have not had mm-hmm. a, a Nike account. I never, managed- asked, I never asked about that, you know, when we had <clears throat> Trey on, because, I, you know, first of all, he was like, Let's not really talk about that. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I've always been curious about, like, how that happened. But the fact that they're able to, like, survive as long as they did without Nike the number one sneaker, you know, distributor in the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, so hopefully something comes from this. I don't know. I just wanted to not, because we mentioned it last week. I didn't want to not say something, but I mean, that store was so pivotal. Hopefully like, you know, Rob and Trey uh, figure something out coming for this next shop. Uh, but I mean, who knows? We'll see. Hopefully if something does happen, it will live up to its name. But I mean, it's just all about timing and a little bit of luck, you know? Hey, listeners, if uh, if you're thinking about starting a store, maybe you should, because, uh, you know, Chris had a very good memory from that and it influenced his uh, his life. So maybe you should open up a store and then maybe throw the sub FM guys in the backyard. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, I saw Bobby Schmurda before he got locked up. Mm -hmm. I saw Pusha T. I saw Afro Jack. I saw Oh, Yo Gotti was back there. I saw Chef Raekwon. I saw. Oh, wait, that was actually another location. Uh, And then. But that whole a life sessions as a IP, like going back to what you were saying, that backyard shit, that will never happen again, bro. Yeah. Because you need like thirty stacks to get like one performance. You know what I mean from these guys. Yeah. But that back then they were just doing the shit off love for free. Mm-hmm. Like I don't think they paid Drake. No. I don't think they paid most of those guys at least for the backyard shit for sure. I don't know about like you know like. With the, with the DMX shit that we referenced one time, I think they had to. I think they threw him some cash, but it wasn't crazy. But it was all it's all off love, bro. But no one does that shit no more. Chris, where can they find you on 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 social media, my friend? At 
not that Cheney, C H E N E Y. Uh, Lawrence, what about you, my friend? Where can they find you? His You're microphone needed. is out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, it's out big yeah. time, baby. But I, I'll hold you down for a second. You can find him at LZ32325. Well, you you messed that up. <laughs> at LZD325. There you go on all social media. Bye, Lawrence. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's he's off the pod now. He's done. He's had enough of this shit. <laughs> no, we don't. He was say like, that. "Yo, Chris, talking about too much a life. I'm out." No, no. We, we can't hear you, bro. It's all good. So, uh, sub podcast. You can find sub podcast at sub NYC. Podcast, NYC. Yeah, yep. you know, there you go. That'll be all of our social medias for the podcast. Uh, Wait, what about you? Me. Where can they find you? They can find me at Trevezus. T R O V E E Z U S. Uh, Lawrence also has another podcast called "I Hate This Job." You're uh, damn right. Yeah, yeah, he's back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. All right, good. Yeah. Perfect timing. <laughs> yeah, I do have podcasts. I hate this job. Uh, listen to it. It's got a lot of comedians on it. A lot of fun people. Luke did it. Chris is going to do it. Uh, we have good conversations about shitty jobs that you hate it. So tune in. I hate this job pod. You can follow it on social media. Yeah. And don't forget three meanie, um, our producer. And um, uh, yeah, discord guys. Hammer in the discord. That's the spot. Hammer in We're the discord. We Getting got a nice Discord. we got a mini run coming up. Yeah, we got a mini run. We got a nice community. Um, we are fucking kicking it in there. Um, please join and hang out with us. Um, do we have any final thoughts before we wrap this episode up, guys? Uh oh, I got my tenant shirt today. Uh, oh yeah. Shout that. out to Tenant. Another to um tenant. another family member of the show, friend of the show. Yeah, absolutely. Great Fire. great shop. Got a stoop stoop kid shirt. It's great. I'm very happy with it. Buy some shit from them. Perfect. Um, and that's it for this week, guys. Please tune in, rate, review, uh, any anywhere you can. Um, tell a friend, and then we will talk to you next week. Yeah. Peace. Peace. Peace.